we're uh, playing today the Beverly update that just released uh, on uh, the 31st here. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's been a hot minute since we last played. Uh, one thing that I will give a word of caution, I am a deeply uh, empathetic person and easily cry. So this game has just a way of turning on the waterworks, so just something that I want to warn you guys about, that uh, I feel the feels deeply and there will probably be a lot of tears. Um, dirty, dirty wet crying. Any, and, and uh, most of the talking will just be narrative talking. Wanted to give you guys that warning. The front reads, to Stella. Hey there, sweet pea. When you have a chance, can you drop by my apartment in Oxbury? I have a few questions I need to ask you. Ev. my keys again. They can't be that far. If I don't find them quickly, my ice will melt. Then we'll have quite the mess. Oh, where are those keys? Look at you, you're not even helping. Well, you did listen to me ramble on. That's something, sweet pea. You look like you've seen a ghost. Are you okay? That's alright. Let little old Bev take care of you. That's what neighbors are for, dear. I invite you inside, but no keys means no couch. That couch is so comfortable. The pillows are just perfectly lived in. More like stepped on, really. I remember Henry and Sarah jumping up and down on that thing. Once at our old house, Henry fell and hit his head on that glass table. He was screaming at the top of his lungs. There was blood everywhere. On the drive to the hospital, he asked if he was going to die. I couldn't help it. I just started laughing. No, Pumpkin, it's going to be fine. I wish I still lived in that house. I had to sell it when David passed away. Plus, the kids are all living out of town by then. It was too big for little old me. And that lawn... I didn't want to break a sweat every Sunday afternoon mowing the grass. The house, did you know we had it designed? By a professional architect. He was quite the sharp dresser. Always dressed in the black with a slick mu looking mustache. I had a bit of a friendly crush on him. I know, I know. I'm sure if I ran into him, he wouldn't recognize me. Or maybe he would. He did mention he had a photographic memory. You know what? Maybe I should ring him up. Say something like, Dear Anthony, I would very much like to have the original plans for my old house. I lost them in a recent move and would like to have a copy. Could I come over and pick them up? Wait a minute. Even better, you should go see him. See if he still is as gorgeous as in my, in my dreams. If you come back with bad news, now save me a trip. His office was somewhere in Hummingbird. I don't know the address. You remember, I lost my purse with my address book and my mother's brooch. Oh, well, I don't want to think about it. That brooch was all she talked about. Well, don't just stand there. Go ask around in Hummingbird. With that smile of yours, there's no stopping you.
I'm not a travel agency. I'm not a phone book. Find your friend on your own. Huh. What? You woke me up. I was taking a rejuvenating mo momentary nap. Uh -huh. Yes, my name is Anthony. I am indeed a very successful architect. With, might I add, impeccable taste. Uh -huh. What can I do for you? Beverly? Uh -huh. I've had so many clients over the years, I can't possibly remember them all. Then again, uh -huh. I've had so many drinks as well, and I can remember them all. Some I enjoyed, some I despised. Uh -huh. Yes, la vie. Not sure what that means, but I always thought it was a great way to end a conversation. Uh -huh. Oh, you're still here? That usually ends things pretty quickly. As a world-renowned architect, I've had an incredible life. Uh -huh. If I stopped to think about every single client, I'd go mad. It's more about the experience than the people. The journey and all that. Mm. What? You're starting to annoy me. Uh -huh. Your presence and that awful hat. The Renaissance called, they need that hat back. Mm -hmm. And you're still here. If you won't go, it's time for a harmless prank. You know what? Mm -hmm. I do remember Beverly. Even without a last name or any other meaningful details. Bravo. Mm -hmm. Stellar job of refreshing my memory. You must have a gift. I can visualize her house now. Mm -hmm. In my mind. Quick, write this down. It was an incredibly tall house. Mm -hmm. Very narrow. It had a massive clock. Loud enough to wake the whole neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Also, it's all coming back to me. There was hay inside. She wanted a real barn feel to her house. Oh. Humans being animals and such. It was quite the unique project. Well then, uh -huh. that's all I can remember. The mind is a mysterious bedfellow. Well, uh -huh. I'm going to shut my eyes now and take another small nap. Did what? What a treat! I can't wait to see how you replicated my old house. It won't be filled with memories, but we'll make some new ones. Oh, sweet pea, you went above and beyond. More importantly, how was it? How was Anthony? Did he still have that spark? That certain je ne sais quoi? Oh, you know what? Don't tell me. I'd rather see him for myself. Your words won't do him justice. You remember my friend from back home, Carol? The one with four kids? The one who had that car accident? 
Carol. She would always talk about her crushes. She would go on and on about these Greek gods. And then in person, they were all shaped like celery and had bad posture. They were nothing to write home about. Carol had the wrong taste in men. Her husband was not the quite catch she claimed he was. Oh, enough about Carol and her poor choices. We should go see him. I'll bring you along to chaperone this little escapade. This isn't my old house. This, this, this is a dump. Have you ever seen a house before? It looks like a kid's drawing of a house. It looks like a dog made it. Is this a joke, Stella? If it is, it's not a good one. I'm mortified that you would want me to live in this. That you think this was my home and my children's and my husband's. We lived in a cozy little farmhouse. I know this was years before I moved to the city and you and I met, but this is just a giant clock with some leftover hay inside. I, I, I know you tried your best, but this is a mistake. I can't stay here. I can't go on with you, especially with that as my house. And on top of that, I can't believe Anthony gave you the wrong plans. I need to go back to Oxbury. Let's go. consider making it up to me. My old home was very important. Make sure that uh, it isn't any more confusion. Here's what it should look like. We lived on a farm. There was nature all around us. We had dogs and goats running around everywhere. It was a quaint little farmhouse. It wasn't run down, it had character. It was big enough for the whole family. Better? That should be as clear as day. I hope it will be right this time. And chin up, sweet pea. It's only a setback. 
As you know, I'm allowed to be bossy because I'm very old. here to apologize about the house? Well, don't. It's nice and all, but remember, never apologize because someone asked you to. The real culprit here is obviously Anthony. He might be a professional architect, but he's an amateur record keeper. If he thinks that house was for my family, then he must think very little of me. What a joke. He's heard the last of me. Min, who needs them? Well, then... Let's go aboard. I can't wait to see my house. The right one. Oh wow, you really pulled out all the stops. Yeah. 
I knew I could count on you to build me this house. It took more tries than I imagined, but that's all right. Having you around is quite the treat. My kids just don't come as often as I'd like. They're busy with their own lives. I'm just not a part of theirs anymore. Well, that's what neighbors are here for. I'm glad you moved in upstairs. You've always been a helping hand. And you and Daffodil are so quiet. That's what makes you such a great listener. Well then, let me get settled in. That house and I need some time to reconnect. A good night's sleep in my old bed will do me wonders. We'll talk soon. Sweet pea. I sure am hungry. It's gotta be the fact that I haven't eaten in a while. Thank you. Hey, P. I've got a lead on something incredible. It's huge. Listen up. Apparently, there was this kid in Amberton Park handing out copies of Super Saver Discount Book. No reaction? Oh. Nothing? Oh. You kids these days. Every cent is important. You can't go around squandering your paycheck. You need to be smart about how you spend your money. Oh. Let Bev show you the way. Say you want to buy something. Are you going to pay full price for it? Oh. No, wait. You need to be chasing deals. That's what my mom used to say. And that's what I'm telling you. You just need the patience to pounce at the right moment. You need to be more like a tiger, sweet pea. Let's say you've been eyeing an archive room B2522 for your boat. Randy in Edgeboro Lane is the only one who's got the blueprint. Are you just going to walk up to him and pay full price? I hope that by yes, you mean no. In no way should you be paying full price for anything. You're going to... You are going to wait and find a way to pay a bit less. And if that means taking a detour to Amberton Park before buying something at Edinburgh Lane, so be it. Don't go and just buy that Archive Room B2522 right away. It won't be worth it. Not till you can shave a few glims off the asking price. for a good deal? You want to say big time yes? <laughs> I got a coupon book that might be right up your alley. It's the Super Saver Discount Book. It's got deals. Mm. It's got savings. It's out of control. And it's mostly legal. Mm. It will enhance your shopping experience to the extreme. With this coupon book, you'll be keeping more of your hard-earned glims. These deals will keep you rich, mm. I promise. You want to save, you gotta get this coupon book. It's totally free. Mm -hmm. I'll just take some personal information that will in no way impact your future life. What do you say? Mm -hmm. That's great, here you go. You'll be able to save big time at certain Raccoon Incorporate locations. Mm -hmm. Actually, just one, for now. We're working on expanding. Mm -hmm. My Uncle Randy was trying to you, you and unionize some other shops and it didn't go as planned. Corporate really cut his brakes, figuratively and literally. For now, my Uncle Randy at Edinburgh Lane is ready to slash his prices for you. Take care now.
no. Good job, sweet pea. Lesson learned. You waited and it paid off. I'm proud of you. In any case, you should go ahead and build the archive room B2522. You bought it. You've earned it. Oh, hungry.
Not bad. This looks great. This reminds me a bit of my late husband David's classroom. Obviously, you never met him, but you know, he was a high school teacher. You already knew that. The room is just very similar. You should go inside and take a peek. Maybe see if the projector still works. try this. It was in my husband's work thing. Maybe it will work. Oh, wow. David was a math teacher. He taught at Chelsea High for 20 years. We met on a blind date. A new bachelor is snatched up quickly in a small town. My friend Pauline matched us up. She was the school secretary. That school would have been in shambles without her. She was the first to see him and called me the second he was out of her sight. Hmm. Bev, I just met the love of your life. How about that? She was right. To a point. Hmm. I was the love of his life. He was gone too quickly to be the love of mine. I never met anyone as special as him. He had a warmth that was I was never able to find again. Well, what are we looking at? Must be a formula or something. I've never been that great at math. My brain gets confused with numbers. I have that in common with... Hmm. She told me that she isn't great with... I'm just tired. I can feel it in my bones. Don't ever get old, Stella. It wouldn't suit you.
I do enjoy being on this boat. I've been wondering, would it be possible to build me a house? Remember, the kids and David and I lived on a farm. We had nature all around. We had dogs and goats. It was a cozy little farmhouse. It wasn't much, but it was ours. What am I saying? You've already done that for me. I was just testing you. See if you're quick on your feet. As I can see, you're still sharp. Which reminds me that I need to get my kitchen knife sharpened. That's just something my childhood friend Daryl didn't do. He was cutting vegetables one day and just like that, the blade bo bent, broke, and shattered all over the place. Mostly in his face. He had bandages on his face from all the cuts. His wife Hannah left him. Not because of the cuts, but because he had a secret family two towns over. That just goes to show you can't trust a man who doesn't sharpen his knives. Well, I'll... Uh... I guess I'll go home. This is quite the vessel. At this point, it's essentially a sailing village. A real community. Do you remember Dana? The flower girl with beautiful long red hair. You know, Dana. She went to the desert with some friends. And they all followed this man with a long rope and silky hair around. They all called him Jimmy Jim. Which always sounded odd to me. Was Jimmy a diminutive of James? Was Jim his last name? It just didn't really roll off the tongue. You'd think a cult leader would be better at coming up with names. Dana kept telling me they were looking for some kind of new water. That the water in the cities was too tainted. Full of city sweat and bad omens. That they needed to find a better, cleaner source of water in the desert. She kept wanting me to come with them. Telling me this new water would heal everything. That their new community would be beautiful. Everyone in harmony with each other and with nature. Well, it didn't take long for everyone to be dehydrated. The well they dug lasted a few weeks and everyone started fighting over the water. I guess I'm just saying that I know you're busy. You've got things to tend to. People to see. Places to be. I don't want to be a bother. But I'll just have to be. I've been thinking about a way to repay you for all that running around. I think I've got a pretty good idea, but I need your help with, for the final touch. I was talking to one of the people on this boat. I'm so bad with names. Well, new names. I can't seem to remember your passengers. It must be all the comings and goings. Well, they were saying sometimes the boat goes through a swarm of fireflies. Their bellies are sometimes filled with fire glow seeds. Well, look at that. 
You've already got some fire glow. No need for all that trouble then. The beautiful, perfectly spicy fire glow. Oh, what the heck. I can't keep it a secret for much longer. Do you remember when you first moved into the building? I had been there for years. I sold the house a few months after David died. The kids were heartbroken at first. They were never there. They just wanted their old rooms to stay perfectly intact, I suppose. Well, back to you. Your fridge broke on the first day. Poor thing. I could tell you were broke and couldn't afford takeout. Do you remember what happened? Oh, that's too bad. I made you soup. Not just any soup. My favorite soup in the whole wide world. It was laksa. It was the first thing I ate when I moved to the big city alone. I had moved here to be closer to my sister. It was quite the trip. It took a few days. Well, when I got here, my neighbor, Ariana from 32B, uh, invited me to dinner. Neighbors were friendlier back then. She served laksa. I had never tried it before, but I instantly fell in love. For a year straight, I must have invited myself to dinner at least once a week. Hopefully, I didn't overstay my welcome. Her family was so nice. In any case, spicy food became my ultimate friendship test. If you can stomach it, then you can stomach me! And you passed with flying colors. I couldn't help you with your fridge, but I could keep you fed. My gift to, to you is Aranya's... Uh, forgive me if I'm spelling her name wrong. Aranya's family recipe. I can't recreate it anymore. Well, that's not true. I just believe that at my age, I've done enough cooking for a lifetime. It's time to let someone else take the reins. If you cook a laksa, maybe we can share it. You just have to put fire glow and... Hmm. Fire glow and that delicious powder of grain. Sorry about that. Must have slipped my mind. You'll have to figure it out, I suppose. If I had laksa in front of me, I would remember. Wouldn't that be lovely?
You've got all the spices right. It smells amazing. All right, let me give it a try. My stomach is basically a hot pepper at this point. I can handle it. It's just the right kind of tongue burning. I mean, that's incredible. You haven't lost your way around the kitchen. Wow, I can feel my sinuses clearing. Thank you, sweet pea. I suppose I got carried away a bit there. Sorry, there isn't any left for you. Don't you worry, I'll make it up to you. I know, I know, this was supposed to be a treat for you as well. Next time. Well then, don't you have, do you have a minute? Like I was saying, I've been having this dream. Don't worry, I'm not a monster. I won't start telling you my dreams. Well, maybe a little. So in my dream, I was using the projector in archive room B2522. Then I was transported inside the images. The first image was, let's see. Oh, I remember. We went sightseeing in the city. We rented an apartment for the whole family. It was so luxurious. We had the whole week planned out. Museums and parks and restaurants. Obviously, Henry got sick on the first day. I remember staying by his side, knitting. The only thing he was able to do was draw. Poor thing. He was really obsessed with his cartoon show back then. Probably just giant robots and men in tights. The apartment was somewhere in the old central district. It was supposed to be our home away from home. For a week, at least. And the whole time I was eating a giant bag of sweet corn. That's dreams for ya. They're always a bit foggy. Hopefully you'll find that acetate. It will drag my memory a bit more. Thanks again, sweet pea. You're a lifesaver. It came! You have to check this out. I subscribed to this magazine a few weeks ago. It's Looter's Literary Review. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? You don't know what it is? It's just the most epic treasure hunting magazine out there. Every issue has a very difficult and fantastic riddle to find the lost treasures of the Crow Inn's Inc. Uh, trading empire. The ferried goods from island to island. Before Raccoon Incorporate became a merchant powerhouse, Crow Inns reigned supreme. Of course, Theodore Raccoon started ambushing Crow Inns vessels out of pure mercantile spite. Uh -huh. The company collapsed after a few months of constant attack. Their wreckage still haunts our sea to this day. Entire shipments of valuables were lost at sea and never recovered. End hell now! The answers are all here. One crow ends in corporate treasure chart per issue. That's the promise. 
The rest of the magazine is articles about living off the land, fighting your dreams when sleeping. It even has ads for crystals and dragon eggs. <laughs> it's a pretty great magazine. The guy who writes it is called Casper Crayford. Obviously a pseudonym for security reasons. <laughs> to protect himself from fans and raccoon and corporate. Anyway, I just got my first issue. There's an article on secret airwaves that can cook food in seconds. I'm going to read that right now. You should take a crack at this issue's riddle. I bet it's a hard one. Go ahead. Open it up. <laughs> Looters Literary Reviews presents the first of the crow wings of corporate lost bounty. And remember, salt can be a treacherous foe when you're made of ice. The enclosed portal lane chart for reference. Oh wow, what an adventure. And look at that, you got a chart! Which is basically just a pretty looking treasure map. That will help you find treasure more easily. It's an old map, so it might not be that easy. You can use it with the projector in the archive room B2522. Go try it! when living on a farm in Indiana. Her favorite cigarette brand has always been Red Apple. The night her mother died, she ate five buckets of popcorn to deal with the grief. Astrid makes a mean guacamole but hates eating it. Despite her vocal protestations, she loves hearing Giovanni snoring. Clapped a Nazi soldier with a cast iron skillet during the war. Doesn't really understand the deal with Chablis. Really likes rugby. Thinks the paradigm shift of postmodernist movements was a mistake. Might have eyes in the back of her head, hates when people drag their feet, saw the potential in you all along. Uh, Alice likes one granddaughter more than the rest, but will never tell. Sometimes dreams of Ansgar's strong arms. Caught a fish with his bare hands. Awarded a participation award at a wood carving contest. Sits down in the shower. Thinks citron and quartz are different stones. Once mimicked the movements of a sunflower field for a whole day. <clears throat> Secretly thinks Rose's family is weird. Uh, Mickey and Bruce thinks you don't need to know right now. Loves marble on everything. Says Mickey has never lost a fight. Buck secretly thinks Demons and Ghouls second edition is better than the first. Has a fondness for Paul Bunyan. Can't help correcting people who say, I could care less. Giovanni splashes himself with other people's perfumes whenever he can. Had once stolen an ashtray that already belonged to him. Knows almost all of Pablo Narado's poems by heart. Stanley saw a squirrel once. Ate two breakfasts in a day one time. Likes looking up at the stars at night. Uh, Beverly has won second place at Chelsea's annual chili cook-off. Lily never turns down a drink, is afraid of the big unknown, and always there for her big sister. Remember the friends you made along the way. Great riddle. I bet you won't figure it out. I know where to look, but I've taken a note. The looter's over. Which states never talk about a looting with another looter. 
You're on your own for this one, Stella. Ooh. Bob. Buck's the one who's taken that oath. Let me find the voice. Uh -oh. One second. Uh -oh. Arr. Uh -oh. Ahoy there, matey! Uh -oh. Old Johnny Silver legs right here by my maiden's side. Hoist in the mainsail. As an humble, humble buccaneer, I can ne never disobey my captain. These crow and corporate treasures are an old courser's dream. If you're n near it, I can offer you. I can offer up me a cartographic knowledge. Come see me if you ever feel lost on these seas. Arr. Good luck, Captain. This place is the height of luxury. You can order everything. I can even order fresh milk for my baths. I've been taking two baths a day. It's too much. My skin is so soft. intense. Look at everyone down there. Ants. Mm -hmm. We are giants. I think we are better than them. Mm. That? That's not a giant robot. That's me. I look so young. Oh, wow. He was drawing me, knitting on that chair. Oh, Henry. 
growing up made such a sweetheart out of him. Before that, he was a little monster. The kind of kid who's nosy when the show is on, but calm during the commercials. One day, he just calmed down. It was strange. Overnight, he became his dad. Brilliant and quiet. Real quiet. He just retreated into his thoughts. What an odd thing to to think in your head at night. To, hmm, dream. Yeah, I dream about. I do enjoy being on this boat. I've been wondering, would it be possible to build me a house? You remember the kids and David and I lived on a farm. We had nature all around. We had dogs and goats. It was a cozy little farmhouse. It wasn't much, but it was ours. Oh, my little farmhouse. That's right. It's right there. Well, a job well done once again. Not everyone is good with houses. Oh! I know what I wanted to tell you. This man from my town was one of the two real estate agents around. He had just started and wanted to make an impression. He had a giant mustache and was always wearing a tuxedo. He was quite odd. Anyway, it turns out that he couldn't sell a house to save his life, but... He was the lead salesperson in his district for two years straight. The local paper did a big story on him. They found out that his wife was buying up all the properties. She had like 20 houses in her name. The whole neighborhood was nearly empty. She could afford it. Her dad had struck rich in oil. This goes to show you, you can't judge a... Um, by his... Well then. You don't like my music? Really? You really want me to stop my wonderful music? Oh. Oh. Do you... Does that mean... Ah! It was but a prank. Good one. My name is Alex and I'm your bus driver. Where you want to go? You probably wondered where I've been lately. I've been hiding out in my house. I didn't want to come out. Just like in a small town, word gets around and the gossip starts. My walls are not that thick. I can still hear people talking, talking about me. This kind of thing, unwarranted gossip I mean. It happened all the time back in town. People don't seem to change. One of my good friends was always the nicest to me. She would always praise my hairstyle or the way I dressed. The compliments were always coming. And this was when I just had lost my brother. You remember, I told you that story about the sudden brain aneurysm. Poor thing. Taking the dog for a walk and then poof, on the ground. Well, it was around that time. One day I was at her house for a garden party and we had to leave early. My husband wasn't feeling too well. Too many cocktails. He was such a lightweight. Well, we just, we left quite suddenly, but I'd forgotten my purse. I came back not 15 minutes later, and from the sidewalk I could hear her. Well, she was talking behind my back. Talking about how I wore the same dress to two parties in a row. She said it was uh, in a very offhanded way, like she was just stating a fact. Everyone knows that. She should know better then. That's what I remember. The way it made me feel. I didn't like it. And this is how I feel now. Nobody likes to be kicked when they're down. I've been feeling like I'm losing my mind. And on top of that, other people on this boat have been talking about me behind my back. I don't want you to put yourself in a delicate situation, but could you help? Maybe do the rounds and see for yourself what is going on. I would appreciate it. Thank you, sweet pea.
properly, backing behind her back, by the seven graces of Imalda, oh. I would never, I couldn't. Hmm, I thought she liked me. Uh. Weird. I hope I didn't do anything to upset her. sleep well last night. My back was killing me. What are you doing? Are you busy right now? Oh, oh. I didn't ask you to do that. I haven't been talking to anyone. Have people been talking behind my back? I don't think they would have had time to form an opinion of me. Are you sure I asked you to do that? That sounds like something you would do on your own. I might go introduce myself now. Hopefully you haven't ruined my reputation by now. Oh, sweet pea. Always trying to help out. needed this for you earlier. It should keep you nice and warm if the weather ever takes a turn for the worse. Ah! <laughs> 
Good work. Oh, great pirate captain. What a marvelous find. In the ice, no less. Many captains have perished in such conditions. Not ye. No need to walk the plank. Arr. Now we just have to wait for the next issue of Looter's Literary Review. Hopefully it has more articles about seagulls. I do enjoy being on this boat. I've been wondering, would you be possible for, to build me a house? You remember, the kids and David and I lived on a farm. We had nature all around. We had dogs and goats. It was a cozy little farmhouse. It wasn't much, but it was ours. I know you know something's not right with me. With my memory. With how I can think about things. I... I can't think the way that I used to anymore. It's really hard. But you're here, and it helps. You know what? Don't worry about it. Right. So, I did remember more of that dream I was telling you about the other day. You know, the one with the projector and the sweet corn? That's right. In that one, I was looking at my Dave, at my dad's old film negative, and it was uh, from when he was stationed in Europe. I don't remember where exactly. He never really talked about his experiences. He probably was my complete opposite. He did mention seeing some beautiful houses. He always said we should have built our house in that style. What was the name of that place? Nordweller? That sounds right. Hopefully, you'll find that acetate it will help me remember a bit more. Oh, and take this. I'm sure it will come in handy. Thanks again, sweet pea.
what is that? That view. I love the look of these houses. They are so beautiful. My father was obsessed with architecture. He was a veteran. He went overseas and fell in love with the buildings. Even on that battlefield, he carried his film camera around his neck. He would always be taking pictures. Can you believe that? Despite all the violence and carnage, he still found beauty. Seeing those buildings fall left quite the impact on him. He didn't talk about it much. The war, I mean. Architecture became more than a... He talked about that all the time. Did I ever tell you that I lost my purse with my address book and my mother's brooch? I don't think so. Well, that purse had that photograph inside. I would take it out from... Hmm. Let me take a little break. I can feel it in my bones. The season is about to change. You should take a look at the flowers. You don't remember? When we were neighbors, we had these beautiful red flowers in our garden. You looked so surprised when they would bloom each springtime. You probably thought it was magic or something. You had the look of how did they survive all winter? Well, flowers are resilient. They remember that they want to grow, to see the sunlight, to feel its warmth. And that's what I like the most about you, sweet pea. You were always the brightest part of my day. I'm glad we were neighbors. Neighbors. You! I can feel it in my bones. The weather is changing. We should take a look at our flowers. You don't remember? When we were neighbors, we had these beautiful flowers. You looked so pr surprised when they would grow. You probably thought, well, I'm not sure. Flowers are strong. They remember that they want to grow. To feel the sun. That's what I like most about you. You were always there. I'm glad we were neighbors. Maybe. We would find me. Find a new place for me to live. I? Well, never mind. I have some snacks, Stella. Do you want some?
Stella? Do you remember? Remember those flowers? I can't... I think it's time. Time for me to admit it. I can't go on any longer. You know where we need to go, neighbor? Thank you. Always there. There. There for me, Bella. Mm-hmm. 